the audience. And so I wanted to start with one which I don't think people ask you actually very often in interviews, which is firstly, like, how are you? You are one of the busiest people on the planet. You also always look remarkably fresh. How are you? Fine, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I kind of get used to anything, and it has been like a sort of crazy busy last couple of years, but now it just feels like normal life, and I forget that it used to be otherwise. Okay, let's, I want to start by kind of diving in. We had a lot of fantastic questions from the audience across a number of different kind of areas. And I want to start with actually the question of when we look forward, is the future of OpenAI more models like O1, or is it more larger models that we would maybe have expected of old? How do we think about that? I mean, we want to make things better across the board, but this direction of reasoning models is of particular importance to us. I think reasoning will unlock, I hope reasoning will unlock a lot of the things that we've been waiting years to do. And the, the ability for models like this to, for example, contribute to new science, uh, help write a lot more very difficult code, uh, that I think can drive things forward to a significant degree. So you should expect rapid improvement in the O series of models, and it's of great strategic importance to us. So another one I thought was really important for us to touch on was when we look forward to OpenAI's future plans, how do you think about developing no-code tools for non-technical founders to build and scale AI apps? How do you think about that? It'll get there for sure. Uh, I, I think that the first step will be tools that make people who know how to code well more productive. But eventually, I think we can offer really high quality no code tools. And already, there's some out there that make sense. But you can't, you can't sort of in a no code way say, I have like a full startup I want to build. Um, that's going to take a while. So when we think of where we are in the stack today, OpenAI sits in a certain place. How far up the stack is OpenAI going to go? I think it's a brilliant question. But if you're spending a lot of time tuning your rack system, is this a waste of time? Because OpenAI ultimately thinks I'll own this part of an application layer, or is it not? And how do you answer a founder who has that question? The, the, the general answer we try to give is, and you have to assume that we're biased here and talking our book and being wrong, but the general answer we try to give is, we are going to try our hardest, and if you think we'll succeed at making our models better and better and better. And if you are building a business that captures some kind of small if we do our job right, uh, then that will not be as important in the future. If on the other hand, you build a company that benefits from the model getting better and better. If, you know, an Oracle told me today that O4 was gonna be just absolutely incredible and do all of these things that right now feel impossible, and you were happy about that, then, you know, maybe we're wrong, but at least that's what we're going and if instead you say, okay, there's this area where, there are many, but you pick one of the many areas where O1 preview underperforms, and some of the patch system just doesn't really get it to work, then you're sort of assuming that the next turn of the model won't be as good as we think it will be. And that is the general philosophical message we try to get out to startups. Like, we, we believe that we are on a pretty, a quite steep trajectory of improvement, and that the current shortcomings of the models today um, will just be taken care of by future generations. And, you know, I would encourage people to be aligned with that. So we did an interview before with Brat, and, sorry, it's not quite on schedule, but I think the show has always been successful when you kind of go a little bit off schedule. You have this, well, we're in the end, yeah, I'm sorry for that. Uh, but there was this brilliant kind of meme that came out of it. And I felt a little bit guilty that you, you said wearing this 20 VC jump, which is an incredibly proud moment for me, uh, for certain segments like the one you mentioned there, that would be the potential to steamroll. If you're thinking of the founder today building, where is OpenAI going to potentially come and steamroll versus where they're not? Also, for me as an investor, trying to invest in opportunities that aren't going to get damaged, how should founders and me as an investor think about that? There will be many trillions of dollars of market cap that gets created, new market cap that gets created by using AI to build products and services that were either impossible or quite impractical before. And the 
there's this one set of areas where we're going to try to make it relevant, which is, you know, we just want the models to be.